Cynthia, you were just extolling the virtues of Shallow Hell. Do you want to talk about that? One of my most favorite movies of all time, Shallow Hell, with Jack Black, Gwyneth Paltrow, and Anthony Robbins. Um, what's what's is in the, the what's the plot of Shallow Hell? I mean, don't so, give away. I haven't watched I, it yet, and I want to now. I want to see it. It's classic, but so don't. don't don't spoil it for me, but what yeah. happens? So he gets stuck in an elevator with Anthony Robbins, and Anthony Robbins gets... He's a life coach. Yeah, that's right. And in the movie, he's a life coach. And, and so um, he starts to talk to uh, Jack Black, and who's Hal in the movie, uh-huh. and he discovers that he's a little bit shallow, especially towards women. And so he says, I'm going to do you a favor. The Jack and, Black character is? Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. And so then Anthony Robbins casts some kind of a, a spell. He does something to his mind. And going forward, uh, Hal can only see people, um, what's inside of them. So he can't see the physical, but instead he sees their heart and their character. And so um, the women that he sees now that he finds absolutely beautiful are some of the purest hearted women. And so um, he may not be conventionally, who may not be conventionally attractive, um, but he can see their soul, so to speak. And so then he meets Gwyneth Paltrow. Um, who again doesn't fit the in the movie um, her character doesn't fit the conventional beauty Uh and he falls madly in love with her and um, then at some point uh, they wait are you giving something away no no I'm just gonna say at some point um, he is able to see her how she really is and at the end it turns out awesome so that you pretty much gave I sorry but it's just such a good movie it's so funny just started with the premise of like this shallow guy who <laughs> now is forced to see the inner beauty of everything. And then... And leave it? And leave it. Yeah, you're right. You're right. But, I should have done that. So I'm not going to watch it. Oh, Betty, you have to watch it. It's hilarious. He's... But I'm probably not watching it for the plot. I'm probably watching it to see Jack Black, right? Do his thing. So oh, I've my God. Seen, I've seen him in School of Rock. Okay. Which is... I've seen that a, a few times. Uh, I think I may have seen that with my friend Dave Ford in the movie theaters when it came out and then I watched it again with my kids and then I've probably seen it again with my kids. Uh, Nacho Libre. Oh my God. Seen with my kids. Uh, I don't know how many times. That's that's a good movie. That is so hilarious. It's a great movie. Uh, what what else have I seen? He's done so many. It's Tenacious it's... D, which we were just listening to. Oh yeah. To. And and this is something Cynthia that had never heard Tenacious I had D. never heard any of his music. But you played some of it for me, and I loved it. He is going to be joining us at 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. This is Jack Black that we're talking about of Shallow Hell, That's right. Tenacious D, School of Rock, Nacho Libre. For those of you on the live stream, tell us your favorite Jack Black movie that we need to watch. Oh, that's a good idea. Right? Yeah. Because I've, I've got a very limited frame of reference for Jack Black stuff. But I I like him a lot. I think he's one of the funniest people. And School of Rock, as somebody who wanted to be a rock and roll musician uh, at some younger point in my life, God, that that movie just really... I'm not going to try to do the plot like you just did in Shallow (laughs) Mountain. I'm tempted to, though. But that movie, that, that one gets me. In, like, kind of a sweet way, as well as being really funny and having some amazing performances, including by the school kids. Yeah. Um, Folks really like School of Rock. Yeah, it, that is such a good movie. So, Jack Black, I, I didn't even finish my, my thought, Jack Black is going to be with us at 2 p.m. on this program of massive phone banks that we initiated anew yesterday, where, where folks, we made two and a half million Holy calls. In fact, we made smokes. two million six hundred thousand plus. It's incredible. Yeah, and we had amazing guests yesterday as well. We had Lucy Baines Johnson. We had Christian Cooper. We had. Uh, I'm not going to give away the, the big one at the end, in case you all were not on that one. Mark we had Consuelos. Eric Holder. Uh-huh. We had Mark Consuelos. We had. Who am I leaving out? We should uh, never start a list unless I know the list. Uh, but we had I'm amazing people. And at the end of the day, kind of who, 
brought the the house down was Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, right. and there were, I think, we think around 1,900 people making phone calls. Oh, on 1950. That shit. 1950. 1950. Yep. 1950. Yep. That's two years after my mom was born. That was the year my mom was born. Your mom was born in 1950. Did your mom go to Loretto? She did. My mom went to Loretto. Maybe. Right, so maybe they were. They, knew? They were uh, my mom was the upper class woman. Your mom was the underclass woman. That's right. Yeah. The freshman, while my mom was a junior. Yeah. Maybe they passed each other in the hall one day. It's amazing. Maybe they knew each other. But do you know who you might have left off? As... Hold, hold on a second. Oh, let's, sorry. Let, let sorry. Me, I, let, I just got to say this. Yeah. Um, when Representative Ocasio Cortez was on, there were. Almost two thousand, almost two thousand yep. people who, who who came to see her. Let's let's be honest. She she drew them in. Um, she helped to, to promote the event, share the fact that we're going to be making these calls into Texas, and folks followed her lead. They came on to hear her, to be inspired by her, and then critically and crucially, they stayed on to make phone calls, and they made yep. a hell of a lot of phone calls. So. Everyone who made phone calls with Eric Holder, Christian Cooper, Mark Consuelos, Lucy Baines Johnson, and who else? Silverman. Oh, that's Sarah right. Silverman. That's right. That's well, right. Frankly, of the whole group, <laughs> I was the most nervous to yeah. meet because I'm just a massive Sarah Silverman fan. And I started to get into her podcast, which is hilarious. <laughs> and I wish I could play some snippets, but there's probably nothing that's appropriate it's to not play PG. on the live stream. But it, it is so, so good. And I've just been in this big Sarah Silverman kick. And then she's helping us with the phone bank. And so Cynthia can tell you, because she was in the, the room while we were getting ready. And I was like, what do I ask her? And how yeah. do I not, you know. Got a little nervous up. on that one. I was a little nervous. And I was nervous afterwards. So anyhow, that whole amazing cast of, of volunteers who helped us to raise more volunteers and gave of their time. Uh, we cannot thank you all enough, thank them enough. But all told, two, 2.6 million phone calls yesterday. Incredible. Two Texas voters wow. in the biggest swing state, the most diverse swing state, in the most important election of our lives, the state that has gone from 50th in voter turnout because of massive voter suppression and voter intimidation to first in the nation in ballots cast, First in the nation to surpass 2016 totals. First in the nation in young voter turnout, which is up 600%. That is Texas for you wow. in 2020. And we are calling the remaining millions of Texans who have yet to cast their ballot. As many as have cast their ballot, almost 9.7 million Texans have mailed, or sorry, have cast their ballot during early voting. Some mail most through, you know, in-person early voting. Almost 10 million people have voted. There's still millions upon millions who have not, and we want to call them That's right. and reach them and just remind them that Election Day is tomorrow, Tuesday. Oh, my God. Oh, my that. God. Tomorrow. I, I've been waiting four years to wow. say that, but not as much as I've been waiting four years to say that Donald Trump has lost the 2020 election. That's for another day, tomorrow. Uh, but... Tomorrow, we need those millions of registered, leaning, likely, or defiantly Democratic voters to cast their ballots. But we just can't hope that they're going to do it. Like, sure it would be nice if you guys did it. We actually have to, to do our part to remind people who may be working two or three jobs, right. who may have two or three kids, who may have a parent in the hospital at a time of pandemic spread That's of right. the deadliest virus to hit this country in a hundred years, who, who have a lot going on in their yep. lives. And this phone call, which doesn't have to take more than a minute, you know, hey, Cynthia, this is Beto. I want to remind you that election day is tomorrow. And um, I'm here to help you find your polling place or the hours that it's open or the documents you need to bring. You know, your, your identification, prove who you are. That's it. And most people are going to say, you know what, Beto? I was already planning to vote, but I appreciate the phone call. Some folks are going to say, um, numero equivocado, got the wrong number, they hang up. Some folks are going to get their answering machine. But some folks, and, and we had a lot of these calls yesterday, 
Oh shit, that's right. Forgot. Tuesday's election yep. day. Thank you for the call. Um, you know what? I will take some help on the polling place. I that's right. just moved to this neighborhood and I have not voted here before. So would you mind looking that up? No problem. Let me put that in. Do, 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 do. Put it in. Give them the polling place. Another vote. And, and then importantly, I say, you don't have to do this. You follow your, your judgment. And, and where your heart takes you with these conversations. I will typically say, um, you know, is there a time we can commit you to vote at? Uh, and, you know, the person might say, well, I gotta be at work at nine, and so I leave at eight. And I say, well, the polling place we, we just looked up opens at seven. Um, I know you got a lot going on. Could you get up a little bit earlier, just this one day tomorrow, and get to that polling site at 7 a.m. So to cast your ballot? And yep. And they say yes. Yep. My favorite, favorite call yesterday was with Carmen. Carmen? In Killeen, Texas. And she was so glad I called. And I'm a little nervous every call I make. And I've made thousands of these calls. Tens of thousands probably over the years, but thousands this year. And uh, and I'm nervous about calling. It just says the person's name and you know the phone number and zip code that they're in. And Carmen was so glad I called. It's like she was waiting for me to call. That's awesome. Not for me to call, but for someone to call. I don't think she knew who I was. And then we called, uh, I called this guy Edward in Houston. And Edward's like, I live at such and such Seacrest in Houston, Texas. Here's my zip. And I can't, I can't find his polling place. And I say, uh, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm, I must be using the system wrong. Uh, let me get your, your, your cell phone number. I will text you back your polling place. So we hang up with him. And I look it up. There's no Seacrest Street in the, the Houston area, in, in right? Houston. Yeah. There, there, is, there is Seacrest in another southeast Texas town. And so I... But the zip codes don't match. And so then I've been texting Edward to see. I must have misheard the, the name of the street. Is it Ryan Seacrest, somebody we were talking about yesterday? Yeah, we were. So maybe because yeah. we were talking about Ryan Seacrest <laughs> and he said the name of his street and it sounded a little bit like Seacrest. Picked up on that. I picked up on that. So anyhow, those are the kind of calls you're making. You can sign up. Is there a pinned link, Cuddle? No, but I'm going to work on that. Oh, if somebody, oh, wow. would you guys mind? We I have... was billing time so that you could pin the link. I'm sorry, but if somebody could help me out and please put the Powered by People link on there, I will do my it's, best it's to pin it. PoweredXPeople.org. That's the website, PoweredXPeople.org. And you can sign up for the phone bank at 2 p.m. Central Standard Time, 1 p.m. Mountain, noon Pacific. We need you 3 guys. 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with Jack Black and in vivo, live. Exciting. We'll be there to encourage us yeah to get us fired up yep to bring us out because you you may not have been following what's been going on in texas you may not have known that you could make a difference you follow jack black and you saw that he's gonna be part of this phone bank and you're like i want to be part of this phone bank then so yeah uh jack black at 2 p.m and then we have some other really amazing guests who will also be on at 2 p.m we do and There's, it's a surprise yeah. Oh, you don't want me to no, say no, it. you can say it. I'm okay. just kidding. Yeah. So it was kind of a surprise, but for the Sparta sleeper car at the drive-in fans who were out there, Jim Ward from El Paso, still lives in El Paso, very good friend, uh, amazing humanitarian and human being. Jim Ward is also going to be on the 2 p.m. phone bank and he has brought some friends and Cynthia you've got the the friends uh we've got folks from Pearl Jam from so the band cool. Portugal yep from did I did you hear me say Pearl Jam yeah and that's you know big. what there's no it, response from you on that that's because because I'm so excited they're gonna make calls because they so are they, I'm so excited they're gonna actually be making calls with us so that's Jeff awesome. Ament from Pearl Jam is actually he's not just gonna be there as a famous person an amazing musician yeah uh, he's going to be there as a volunteer calling Texas vote. Imagine wow. you're the world's biggest Pearl Jam fan in Longview, Texas, and you get a call from Jeff Ament. Imagine the, the world's biggest Pearl yeah. Jam fan. You live in El Paso or Houston 
or any one of the 254 counties. Uh, we need to keep them on the phone bank as long as possible. So cool. Uh, we're going to have uh, someone from the band Chicano Batman, which earlier, Cynthia, I you, love you that thought name. it was Chicago Batman. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you there is a Chicago Batman, too. I'm going to crowdsource that. but um, So we have Tenacious D. Wow. Jack Black. We have Sparta, Jim Ward. Wow. We have Pearl Jam, Jeff Ament. We have the bands Portugal and Chicano Batman. Yep. That's that's that's, that's a big lineup that's right a, there. That's just at two o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. Only later two. later in the day, mm -hmm. there are multiple shifts today. Later in the day, we will have the De Chanel sisters. And Cynthia, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? So uh, Emily and Zoe Deschanel are going to be joining Beto, and I believe it's 4 o'clock. But I have to say, Mary uh, Lipford and a ton of other volunteers posted the link. It's pinned on there. So oh, you it guys, is. yes, so you it can is. Go to the link down you can go to the link. It's Mary right Pitford? there. Mary Lipford. Lipford. Thank you, Mary. And then Thank a ton you, of other folks have also posted it. If so, there's one person yeah. you can count on, it's Mary. Mary. Yep. Mary's amazing. Um, thank you for doing that, but I believe it's at 4 p.m. And Beto, can I give you just a tiny bit of trivia that somebody posted? About the De Chanel sisters? Well, it, it gonna go back a little bit. They said, Trish says that um, Sarah Silverman was actually in the movie, The School of Rock with Jack Black. She said she was there, that she showed up, that she was what? part of it, yep. Yep, that's what, no, that's I, what Trish says. Joan Cusack. She also said Joan Cusack, but she said that, that Sarah Silverman was also in it. I don't remember. Well, what, 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 what trigger my memory. What? Trish, if you can give Beto a little bit more context about that and, and tell him what did she, was she, what was her name in the movie? Or was it a very. I don't remember anybody's name, but what did she do in the movie? Okay, well, let's see. Trish, if you can remind us. But hey, I, here's the thing, and to any other actor who was in that movie, no disrespect, but you're in the movie with Jack Black, who dominates <laughs> right. everything. Right. Right. It's just his, it's his personality, and it's his, like he's just amazing. Right. Yeah. Like so, I just remember Jack, and I remember Joan Cusack, but she, because she had such a school marm, um, if that's the right word for it, character, um, who. Uh, Jack Black draws in with his irreverent humor and this counterculture world that, that she, he brings her into. Oh, Eric, Dark Side of the Moon said she was dad's girlfriend. So you see? Oh, at the beginning maybe? I don't know. Oh, his roommate. Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay there Sorry you go. About that. There's I'm, a connection. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big Sarah Silverman fan, and so I don't know why that one didn't stick, but... But it's 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 maybe um, not not a, a critical part of that movie. Oh yeah, it's somebody it says right here. Audrey said Sarah Silverman was uh, Jack Black's roommate girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, that's what I just. Yeah. Kind of, I want to get past friend. this moment because I, I feel <laughs> embarrassed that I'm a big Sarah Silverman fan and, a, and and I'm a big Jack Black fan and they were in the same movie together and I didn't even Hell. make that connection. But it's been a while since I saw that. Yeah. Okay. Next. next All subject. right. Next subject is the the we already talked about the De Chanel stuff in this cup. Uh oh. This this cup has been. <laughs> so Beto doesn't put lids on his cup. Well. On any of your cups, you don't, Beto. That's I okay. Don't. You don't, and so sometimes. It's a waste. Well, things fall into cups well, that don't some, that don't have, have a lid. I have no idea what these things are that are floating. Are you water. sure? Okay. Um, we'll have to dump that out and get some. Well. If, if it just if it'll just settle back at the bottom, of you the can water still again, drink it. Still drink oh, it. Beto, there he goes. Mm. Some good fuzzy water. So, but you were about to talk about the De Chanel sisters. Yeah. Um, so they are going to be on at four. Okay. And then can I just go on to the next person that we Absolutely. have? Absolutely. And then the last one that folks have been posting about, and they're uh, very excited about Jason Bateman. That, that's quite Jason a lineup. Jason Bateman. So, so you have all the bands that I just mentioned at the outset, right? Yeah. Portugal, Sparta, Chicano Batman, Pearl Jam. Yeah. Tenacious D. That's right. Then you have and, and Jack Black. Chicano Batman. Did you say him? I, I think I said. Okay. Chicano Batman. 
And then you have the Deschanel sisters. Wow. Not one. Both of them. Deschanel, but both of them. I don't know if they're actually more sisters, but, but at least two. Zoe the two and, actresses, yes. Yes. Um, who are amazing and, and beyond being incredibly talented, have been very engaged politically. And no, that, that does not come without risk, right? Yeah. For any athlete, any actor, any musician, you know, they have followers and fans who bridge the political spectrum. They've got, you know, hardcore Republicans and super progressive liberals and folks who are libertarian and communist and, you know, everything. And so the safest thing if you are a performer or an athlete or you derive your income from the following that you've generated is not to piss anybody off. And so I'm always impressed by, you know, we talked talk to Steve Kerr the other day, who's the coach of the Warriors, but played for the San Antonio Spurs as well as the uh, Chicago Bulls. That guy doesn't have to do that. Right. A lot of fans out there that, you know, may not like that he's doing that. Right. Um, any of these people that we just mentioned, they're they're going to upset some people by doing this. And the Deschanel sisters have just been out there advocating, um, reaching their following on social media and traditional yeah. media, and making sure that they understand the stakes of this election and, and what they can do to affect the outcome, which is why they're joining us on a phone bank today. So their followers can become volunteers who can call into Texas. I, I can't. Right? I, yes, but do, and it's. I can't believe it's the day before the election. Like, and then it, Jason Bateman. Wow. Um, so let's let's do. We, we did the uh, association game on Jack Black. Jason Bateman. I think of Ozark, which I don't know that you've seen. I've not seen it, but a lot of folks are posting Ozark in here. And, and it's really good. What and is it about? He, I think he may have, and I probably shouldn't say this. I don't know if sure. I think he maybe came up with the concept or was a producer or, you know, was was not only the actor, and that would be enough, but was also, I think, a co-creator and producer and maybe directed some of the, the episodes. Um, do you want me to tell you the entire plot yeah, of, of Ozark? I, I do. I'll only tell you that Jason Bateman's character... Um, married two children uh, is is I think an accountant or a financial advisor and, and planner and just gets into some uh, gets into some bad stuff and bad things follow and they follow him even when he moves from Chicago to Missouri uh, and that's all I'm going to I'm not going to do what you did with uh, Shallow Hell where you told us that gave too much you gave too much too much. But but I think there's a pass because it's such an old movie, but so <laughs> that it, it's okay. It's, it's okay. all right to all do right. that, yeah. Um. So Jason Bateman and then Arrested Development. Arrested did Development. That? I did see that one. And did yeah. you like it? I did. It's an acquired taste. And I don't know if acquired taste is the right. It's 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 got a cult, a, a rabid cult following. Yeah. Like people who love Arrested Development are all about Arrested oh, yeah. Development. Yeah. And. And, uh, and so I hope that all of the Ozark, Arrested Development, and the other things that Jason Bateman said, I hope they are all with us uh, when when he kicks off his shift, which is at what time? Um, 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Yeah. All, all times are central unless otherwise noted. And that's, that's it. Three yeah. shifts today. We had like five shifts yesterday. Right. Three shifts today. Um, that's, a, that's an amazing lineup. But we can still make it, it, all the calls um, that we you, made if yesterday. If you sign up, let us, if, you're, if you have clicked on the link, tell me if my finger is hitting the link right now. Uh, there you go. If there you're you hitting go. this link right here, yep. and you're RSVP, and you sign up, um, after you signed up, you got your confirmation email, come back on the live stream and tell Cynthia, and we'll give you a shout out. Somebody also mentioned the movie Bosses with Jason Bateman, which I did see, and it's hilarious. See? Yes. Give, give me the the thirty second overview of Bosses. It, so it's a group of friends, and Jason Bates, Bateman is one of them, and um, they've had it with their bosses, and so they make a 
plot joking to kill their bosses and it ends up happening or they're trying to do it they're trying to do it they're trying to do it that's it that's it I give too much but I'm not good at, at describing <laughs> but it's hilarious it's like it's a comedy and it's with a little dark twist but it's really funny after this is over you could start a service <laughs> where for people who don't want to watch the movie yeah but they want to have some cultural fluency yeah and and literacy in, in pop culture you could just give them the 30 <laughs> seconds. Like they're stuck in an elevator. He is a shallow person. He can see the real beauty inside. Gwyneth Paltrow becomes his love interest, and they live happily ever after. Boom. Done. 30, 30 seconds shallow Done. hell. Yeah. And then give it a thumbs up. And then, yeah, yep. thumbs up. Uh-huh. Yeah. Rocio Dumi says, hi, Beto. She says, buenos dias, Beto. Buenos dias, Rocio. Julia mi, says. Mi, mi amiga de, del norte. Del norte. Del norte, Texas. Que siempre está haciendo llamadas por nosotros. ¿Con quién caminamos? Caminamos. Uh -huh. Sábado. Tocando puertas. Tocando puertas. Y luego uh, hacemos llamadas. Hicimos llamadas ayer, uh -huh. hoy y mañana. Muy importante porque es um, llamero. Llamero es día llamero. de elección. Mañana. Wow. Oh, we have some folks that have signed up. Javier signed up. All right, Javier. Samantha said on, Samantha. she signed up. Yes. Christian. Christian. Sorry about that. that maybe he says Christian. Yeah. I, I don't know. Signed up for 2 p.m. Um, from Kentucky. Wow. That's a great thing. Hey, why? About, um, that's one of the good things right now is that you can be anywhere in the United States. Not even in the United States anywhere any country and you can sign up and you can help us Let and you ask, can make calls are there any nutmakers on <laughs> that is a uh, that that's been one of my favorite words that i've learned the new words is a nutmegger in what state are you from connecticut 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 if you're a nutmegger beto it's the day before the election wow it's amazing right at, at this time tomorrow Folks will already have been voting for two hours. Yep. In the biggest, most diverse swing state, in the most important election, on arguably the most important day of our lives as a country. Now, when you had kids, when you got married, when you, whatever you did in your life that, that really defines you, that might be the most important day. But as a country, the day that we have in common, this election day, it's hard for me to think of a more important day. So Ruben is asking, can I make the calls from Iowa? Ruben, you can make calls and you can make calls all day. You can start with us at two, then jump on the four o'clock. Is that the next one? Yep. And then jump on the six o'clock. All central phone standard banking. time. You know, we had people yesterday who did nine hours of phone banking straight. I think uh, Rose, Tiam. Uh huh. I'm not going to name her. Dorini. It's another one where I started the list. Dorini. Uh, Christy oh. Gomez Duffy. Gosh, she's amazing. She sure is. Oh, you haven't shown the shirt yet. You're right. Okay, we're gonna. Let me see. Here we shirt go. Shirt shot. All right, shirt shot right there, guys. This is the amazing. You can win this. We didn't give away any shirts yesterday. You know what? We did. We did give away shirts ahead of yesterday for those who signed up the day before. Right. So I hope we've honored all those shirt. Uh, I don't. I, we haven't yet, folks, because I know some people have but said, I mean, "Hey, I've gotten my it, shirt right? yet." Yeah, they're, but they're posting that they haven't. I promise you, you will get your shirt. If we said we're we're gonna send you a shirt, we, we will, will make sure we send you a you shirt. You cannot buy these shirts. You cannot order them online. You cannot find them anywhere other than empowered by people phone bank, and they're American made. They're inspired by the Clash and Elvis Presley and rock and roll. And you would you'll wear few campaign shirts. Would you ever probably want to wear it all, or would you wear after the campaign is over? This one is a classic that will not leave your closet unless you need the money. Because I'm thinking this shirt goes for three figures at least, at least on eBay after this election's over. Yep. Yep. So Anna Scott. Um, oh, Major. Oh yeah. She Major says Anna Scott. she says she calls from the Virgin Islands, Beto. I didn't know that. The VI. Yeah. I had no idea, and she has been. You know I've what? Seen I wondered her all the time. I thought she was on 
the beach in South Carolina. She's always outside. Or in the Keys in yeah. Florida because she always has this beautiful, you know, background. Yeah. And tiki torches and and. And know, it just looks warm. There's a little breeze. Yeah. She, <laughs> she, sometimes she's having a, a rosé. Yeah. Or a, 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 a spritzer. Yeah, and she, yeah, she's amazing. She's been on almost every single she, one, she if not every one. She is a hero. L literally every phone bank I've been on, I think I've seen her. On. Yep. And working hard, I always yeah. see her making calls. There are so many people like that. Yep. And there are so many people who are watching who want to make calls for the first time. And so, whether you're like Major Anna Scott and you, you're on every single phone bank and you, you've got thousands of phone calls to your credit, or whether you've got a 30 minute window today and you'd like to make, you know, in that window, you could probably make 30 or 40 phone calls. Absolutely. How can you make so many in such a short period of time? You're going to get some wrong numbers, we're going to get some answering machines. You're gonna get some hangups, just to be honest with you. Look, if you were looking for an easy way to get involved in this election, go retweet something. If, if you wanna do the hard, necessary work, sign up for the phone bank, because you're gonna be calling complete strangers and talking to them about one of the two things you're not supposed to discuss in, in polite company. And you're gonna do so with the urgency of having the most important election of our lives decided tomorrow, or at least all the votes cast tomorrow in Texas. Um, it's really important, really necessary, but not easy. But, this is a big but. You will never feel so fulfilled. You will never feel such a sense of purpose and function and agency as you will when you're talking with voters in Texas. Because everything else, you're just a spectator. Uh, you know, the social media, watching cable news, look, I do that stuff too. Who doesn't? But if you limit yourself to that, if, if you're just on the sidelines cheering your side on and booing at the other side, I mean, it is immediately gratifying and, and it feels good in the moment. But there's no lasting afterglow of efficacy that you feel after you participated in a phone bank. You're like, right. damn, that was hard. I did it. I'm, I'm a little exhausted yep. after making phone calls for a couple of hours. And there was that dude who was not so friendly on the phone. And, right. you know, and I can kind of laugh about it now, but that sucked in the moment. But there was that woman that I connected with who didn't know where her polling place was. And I found it for her. And now I know she's going to vote on Tuesday. That's right. And if that state rep candidate in Killeen, Texas, who happens to be named Kiki Williams and is amazing, 24-year Army veteran, uh, just extraordinary woman who we want to see in the state legislature. She might win by that one vote. These state house races in Texas are, are decided sometimes by dozens, hundreds of votes, not millions or hundreds of thousands or tens of thousands. So these calls make a difference. And then in the aggregate, you know, when there are thousands of us on, and there were thousands of us on yesterday, in the aggregate, all those calls we make across the 254 counties of Texas, not only do they help those lower ballot races, the, the state house, the U.S. Congress, um, all the way up to railroad commissioner, which is really about our environment and confronting climate change, railroad commissioner, U.S. Senate, M.J. Hagar over John Cornyn, but, but all those calls in the aggregate, all those millions of voters of, that we hope to be able to reach out to today and tomorrow, the last two days left to us to call them, they could help make Joe Biden the first Democratic nominee to win the state of Texas in 44 years. And if he wins the 38 electoral college votes of Texas, game over for Trump. No contest in the courts, no attempt to illegally claim victory on election night when, when all the, the ballots have not yet been counted. 38 electoral college votes from Texas, goodbye Trump. Hello America. That's what we need. Beto, I have a few comments. And um, Ruthie, who is always on. R and Ruthie is Ruthie from yes. the Northeast? Yes, that's the Ruthie that's always on, always helping us. She's amazing. Yep. Now, I should know this. I, I know that we saw Ruthie a lot in New Hampshire. Is she from Massachusetts? I thought so. Or that's is what she I remember. I, <laughs> I don't know, but I remember seeing her in Massachusetts when she brought us the amazing macaroons cookies. and cookies. And so she reminded me, and 
sorry, go ahead. No, 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 sorry, sorry. She just said that Mrs. McNutt was on all six phone banks yesterday as well. Mrs. McNutt? Yeah, I can't. I didn't catch the first name because it came through as a message. So sorry if I missed that. You know, it's a Mrs. or it could be a Miss. If you no, didn't catch the it first was name. a it was a female first name. I so just my dad. Just too much info, but my dad was married before he was married to my mom to another woman uh, from whom. He, you know, they, like, no kids? I don't know. I don't think oh, so. Oh, okay. Uh, I, actually, I don't think so. I have no okay. reason to that. But her name was McNutt. Wow. So what if this is my dad's <laughs> first wife who was on the phone thing with Six us? Six degrees of separation. That's me. right. Everybody's connected at, at some point. I've so, never met, uh, and I don't know if she's out there, but I've never met uh, her. At some point, it would be nice, too, if she's, if she's out there. That would be interesting. So Puerto Rico says hello, Beto. Hello, Puerto Rico. And then Robin and Gibran have signed up for shifts tonight. Thank you so much. Go, Robin and Gibran. I know. And, and uh, our friend from Puerto Rico, are they going to also make phone calls with us? Puerto Rico, are you going to make calls? Come on, If Puerto you Rico. are, come on, let me know. Like Beto said, we would love to have you on the duration of the day. But if you cannot, as long as you are on 20, 30 minutes, everything counts. We have one day left. We need you guys. Please, please sign up. So Amy asks, Amy um, from El Paso, the not Amy? not the Amy, oh, so another the Amy, Amy. Yeah. the Amy, asks if um, how many days have you been wearing that shirt? Have you washed oh it, gosh. Beto? Is it clean? You know what? It doesn't smell, but I may not smell to myself. So, so I don't, you might no, be able I, to tell that myself. Well, I, I, from here I don't, Beto. From here I don't smell anything. No. no. I mean, it is, it's musky. Um, well, but I don't have to see anybody today. So I it's mean, fine. Sorry if it smells to you. It does not smell to me. Nope. I feel like you know me well enough that you would say something. Oh, I would. Uh, yeah. I've been wearing this shirt off and on for, um, not, this is embarrassing to say, but. No, no, it's, it's keep it real, Beto. I like it. It's keep it real. It's the truth. California it's such says. A, you, you want this shirt. And listen, folks, the only way to get it is to join the phone bank. Not everyone who joins the phone bank, to paraphrase Marco Rubio, will get a shirt. Right. But everyone who gets a shirt will have joined the phone bank. That's right. Uh, so, it's so comfortable. It, you know what it is? I've got, I've got is. three other shirts in my bag that I haven't worn. Yeah. Uh, this is my last pair of underwear for the trip. Whoa. Last, I'm re-wearing the socks that I wore two days ago. Oh, no. I wore them for like half the day and then um, just wasn't wearing socks anymore because I was just, you know, making phone calls in the house. So those socks are, are relatively fresh. Right. The underwear, absolutely fresh. The pants, I've been wearing these jeans the, the whole week and the shirt. You know what, Beto? We're working hard. This is this is days and we, we got to do all we can. And so if we have to wear, you know, dirty socks or, or the shirt twice, it's El Paso. okay. Get that here El we go, Paso here we go, here we come, El Paso. Boom. All right. So yeah, that's that's what we're doing. Can, can I just recount the driving we've done so far? Yeah. So we drove from El Paso to Collin County. Which was about 10 hours? No, I, eight, eight and a half, maybe 10, I don't know. I think it was 10. We um, canvassed. Right. Uh, knocked on doors with great volunteers. Um, then we drove to, don't, don't, I'm, I'm going to see if I can string this together. Because when I ask you, like, where have we been? You don't like those questions. You don't like being put on the spot. No, I don't like I'm, feeling I'm gonna be, pressured. I'm going to be on the spot for you. Okay. So we drove to Collin County from El Paso, knocked on doors, canvas the next day. Then that afternoon, phone banked. And then the next day... We drove to Harris County. That's right. Houston, Texas. Five hours from where we were. Is it five hours? It was five hours. Okay. And um, we. Um, oh, I remember this. We canvassed there. What? You, add, add some color. What? No, I remember. Like, are you talking about Houston? Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, we had a, a we canvassed, we knocked on doors. Well, you said I remember this. Oh, like, I meant after. Like, I meant, I meant, I remember where we went after. Oh, and I usually not good at that, but I remember. So we uh, we were in Acres Homes uh, subdivision, uh, knocking oh. on doors with the Texas Organizing Project. Who, you know, a lot of folks are now asking, well, how did Texas get 
to the point where it's in play and that the morning consult poll today says Joe Biden, 48.1%. Donald Trump, 48.1%. That's a very specific tie. Right. It's not like they're both within the margin of error. He's at 48, he's at 48 and a half. It's, they're both at 48.1. Right. How did that happen in a state that last elected a Democrat statewide in 1994, that last uh, pledged its electoral college votes to a Democrat in 1976? How is that happening? Groups like TOP, the Texas Organizing Project, awesome have been at this for years yep. and they're they're talking to specifically those voters that the state of texas has intended to exclude and suppress and intimidate from voting so black voters mexican-american voters voters in communities of color those are the voters that top is is talking to and more importantly listening to they are amazing we got to knock on doors with top in harris county then we drove to bear county that's right um, for those not from Texas, B E X A R. But it's not. It's spelled like Bexar. It's spelled like Bexar, but it's Bear, and it's San Antonio. And we knocked on doors again with Top, and we also knocked on doors with Selena Montoya, who is a state rep candidate, who is, I mean, she's just running as hard as you can run, and has a shot. You know, it's against the odds, against the conventional wisdom, against the incumbent against the party in power, she has a shot at winning that race. And so we knocked on doors with her, met a, an amazing young woman who had just voted, saw us in her neighborhood and rode up on her bicycle. Remember that, Kano? So, and it was a cold yeah. day. It was kind of raining. It was like 45 degrees. It was very cold. And it was, she warmed us up with her presence. Yeah, it was really sweet. She actually posted a picture on uh, Twitter about it. Yeah. Yeah, about meeting you and Selena. Then we drove from Bear County back to Dallas County, mm -hmm. knocked on doors in Garland with Brandy Chambers, another amazing state house candidate. And uh, again, kind of a cold day. It was raining. It was raining. It was I remember so we knocked doors in a neighborhood where some of the folks we met um, preferred to have the conversations in Spanish. And, uh, and I just, again, you know, this stands out to me, Kano. It was it was a very cold day. People were very warm to us. They were what like do, do most people want a complete stranger knocking on their door in the middle of the day, um, talking about campaigns and elections? Maybe yeah, not. Right. But to to be gracious and kind and welcoming and compassionate and warm when you when you open the door and I'm standing ten feet away from you with a mask on at a safe yeah. distance. That's that's nice. I remember the family where you spoke. Um, the little boy was looking through the window. He was eating. The he window. was so cute. You know, little kid. He's one years old, and he's like learning how his, to walk. Uh -huh. Well, he's got his. He's pressed up against the window. His face is up against the window. He's like licking the window, which <laughs> my kids did when they were one. That you know, they eat anything, lick anything, and uh, and he's just watching us in his front yard so while his cute. mom, you know gets ready to answer the door and then she answers the door and we have this conversation and he's watching us the whole time so interested in laughing yeah like he was we, happy we just cracked him up yeah. anyhow that that was a great and then we jump in the truck and drive to south to to Rio Grande Valley almost to due south to the Rio Grande Valley and stay the night in we in McAllen or Mission or Edinburgh it was McAllen in McAllen and um, and then Knocked on doors in, in Palmview, knocked on doors in Mission, went to early voting polling locations. Edinburgh. Mm -hmm. And then went to Edinburgh to welcome the next vice president of the United States of America, Senator Kamala Harris. And we saw our friends Joaquin and Julian Castro. Um, we saw Congressman Gonzalez and Cuellar. MJ. We saw MJ Hagar. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw Chuy Hinojosa, who's the state senator from the area. Um, we saw members of the Edinburgh City Council. Oscar uh, Longoria. We saw a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Oh, we saw State Representative Oscar Longoria. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. Right. That's then we drove. Then that that uh, rally finishes that evening at about 6 p.m. We drive back up another eight, eight and a half hours back north to get to Collin County again. 
to start a canvas the next morning. We started canvases in Tarrant County, in Denton County, and in Collin County with a lot of great volunteers who knocked on thousands of doors. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone who did that. It's never easy and it's especially difficult in the time of COVID, but you were rigorous in following the safety protocols that we outlined. You had, uh, you know, you had your mask on, you kept you know, six to 10 feet apart and you respected um, you know, the public health guidance that, um, that we shared. Uh, and you talk to voters, and that is just so, so critical. One of the candidates, Jennifer Skidenenko, is on right now and said thank you for coming out. We knocked on doors in Denton with Jennifer Skidenenko and Angela Brewer. We knocked on doors in Tarrant County with Elizabeth Beck and Joe Drago. We And, uh, by the way, Congressman Mark Vesey showed up to right. lend his support and rally the troops, and he's amazing. He could be doing any number of things, focusing on his own race. He came out to help state representative candidates and um, just just a wonderful human being. We went to um, we went to Collin County and there we saw Sharon Hirsch and Lorenzo Sanchez and knocked on doors with them. And then let me go back, Connell. Let me go back to Tarrant County because I left out Jeff Whitfield. And Lydia um, Bean? And Lydia Bean. Uh-huh. And we said Elisa Simmons, right? She oh, and Elisa was, Simmons yep. back to um, back to Tarrant County. That's right. Elisa Simmons. God, it was so many. So, it was so many. I just want to make sure we don't leave anybody out because yeah. I, I want you to know the state rep candidates who are out there hustling, knocking on doors, yeah, um, leaving nothing to chance and, and no voter, um, you know, untouched, yeah. uh, whether by phone, by text, or by door. So we had Elisa Simmons, Lydia Bean, Jeff Whitfield. Joe Drago, Elizabeth Beck, Sharon Hirsch, Lorenzo Sanchez, State Representative Retta Bowers, yes. who came out. Um, who am I leaving out? I'm trying to think. This, I think we this said is the third Elizabeth time I've begun a list Jeff without Whitfield. knowing every, everybody on, on the list. I think you got everyone, but Jeff. If I missed you, I, I, Jennifer Skidenko and Angela Brewer, which yeah, I said earlier. But we already yes, said that. Amazing. Yeah. You, you all are the most, the hardest working the most inspiring field of state representative candidates Texas has ever known. And many of you are running in districts that last saw a Democrat run 20 years ago. Julie Gobble, who made phone calls with us last night. And Eliz was on. Eliz and Julie and um, Jason, Jason Rogers. Rogers. That's right. But but Julie Gobble in Tyler, Texas, you know the last time a Democrat ran for state rep in Tyler, Texas? I don't. You were. Oh, no. Yes, you were. You were 30 years old. You were 28 years old. Yeah, so that's a long time. I was 28 years old. You and I are the same age, roughly. Yeah. Uh, it was 20 years ago. Wow. Yeah. Go Julie. Go Julie. Jason yeah. Rogers is running in a district that last saw a Democrat run in the 19th century. That no, takes, I don't know, I, that, it's been a long time. That takes a lot of courage. Eros Markowitz was on making calls yep. last night in uh, Fort Bend, which is yep. seeing really amazing turn out and she's leaving up in a chance she's making phone calls joe signed up for today thank you joe Go, joe all right and daniela from ecuador says hola beto que dice daniela very cool daniela if you are um, able to respond to this what are what, what is something i can say that someone in ecuador would know that i know what i'm doing ah. so in, in what is kind of what would you say uh like que dice wey que onda que onda que dice uh, uh, there's another like way is que neta or neta la neta la way. neta way <laughs> like that's that's Those a are very El Paso Juarez Ocho. yeah fronterizo Juarense Juarito yeah um, what 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 would someone say by way of greeting in Ecuador where it's it's a little bit different than what you would say in Mexico or in Texas or in El Salvador or Spain oh cool I'm gonna wait on that one all right. Um, so Natasha from Connecticut, Natasha Reed says Nutmegger. hello. Nutmegger. She says hello. We have a Montana grandma that says hello. Go grandma. California says hi Beto. What's up California? And um, if you guys have signed up, please let me know. I'd love to give you a shout you, you out. Can, you can make phone calls with the Deschanel sisters today. You can make right. phone calls with Jason Bateman today. Who you know who the you know who's most excited about Jason Bateman? Who's that? Um, truth be told, my wife. 
Is she a big Jason oh Bateman my fan? God. Like not we're both fans of Ozark and we've almost finished watching the whole thing. Um she is a huge, huge fan of his podcast that he does with Will Arnett. And she thinks and I, I, I have to admit, I, have, I need to listen to it a little bit more. I'm just, she's played me excerpts, and they're good, but I need, I need to listen to it a little bit more. Um, they, they recently interviewed Stacey Abrams, and it's a really good interview. Um, she loves Jason Bateman. So maybe you got to bring Amy on to say hi to Jason, yeah, Jason Bateman. It too. might be uncomfortable, <laughs> but I, but I will do that for the cause. Um, so you can make calls with Jason Bateman. I know Amy's going to want to do that. You can make calls with Jack Black, with Jeff Lament from Pearl Jam, with, uh, I, I forget the the, uh, the the name of the musician Chicano from Portugal Batman. and Chicano Batman, uh, but Jim Ward from Sparta, uh, John and Zach from Portugal, and uh, Cynthia's telling me Carlos Arevalo uh, from Chicano Batman. And that's at 2 p.m. Folks want to know when they're going to be there. 2, 2 p.m. Central, Central, Central Standard Time. Standard Time. Go, go to that link. Yeah, am I touching the link? I mean, uh, right. Boom. You're touching the link right now. But go to that link. Just like I did it, you do it. But when you do it, it's actually going to bring up a new page. You can RSVP. You can also share this live stream so that others in your life and your social network know what's happening and have a chance. Don't leave them out. Don't make them feel like... I should have done something more in the days leading up to that election. It was so close in Texas. Give them a chance to do something more right now. We're going to make phone calls to Texas voters. There are nearly 10 million who've already voted. We lead the country wow. in votes cast. Wow. That's cool. But there are still millions who have yet to cast their ballot in the state of Texas. And we're, are, do you have a problem with my drive? Well, it's a little bouncy. I'm it's trying bouncy. really hard it's to the keep... Texas Department of Transportation. That's why we need... No, I was going to say that's why we need new state reps. The Texas Department of Transportation, this is actually a nice road. It's just a little bumpy. Yeah. But I could care less about the roads. What I care about are drawing fair districts, yeah. ending the racial gerrymander, uh, ending the closure of hundreds of polling places to make people wait in long lines. I want to end the uh, onerous, racist, unconstitutional voter ID laws that go against the, the letter of the, the law and the spirit of the 1965 Voting Rights Act. I want Texas to be a leader on confronting climate change before it's too late, expanding Medicaid so that people can get care and be well enough to do the things that they were yeah. born to do. I want us to reduce gun violence in a state that has seen four of the worst gun violence massacres in American history. The, the roads, you put the roads on that list somewhere, but this highway is yeah. okay. You know, yesterday when you were talking with um, Representative Ocasio-Cortez, you guys talked about the climate a lot and it really got to me. Did it? Yeah, I, I, I think that is such, you know, critically, critically important for my kids and my grandkids and everybody that lives on this planet and that is something that we all share and so that was really inspirational for me to hear you guys talk about that and I think that is so important this election as well I know we've talked about Krista Castaneda who is running for Krista railroad. Castaneda uh -huh. is running for railroad commissioner and for our Texas voters out there um, obviously lots of important races and, and understandably our attention is focused on the top of the ticket Joe Biden making sure that he wins Texas and ends the national nightmare on the night of November. But state rep races are just as, if not, some might argue more important because they decide not just what happens next year, but they, they really decide the next 10 years because we will redistrict Texas in 2021 for a decade. And then at the, at the, you know, close to the top of the, the ballot is the railroad commissioner and folks the railroad commission really doesn't have anything to do with trains or railroads that is the commission that regulates oil and gas and determines the quality of our air our soil our water what if any role texas will have in confronting climate change before it's too late um i would love for krista castaneda to be there as cynthia said not just for us but for the more importantly for the generations that follow ours. Those future generations are gonna be looking back on us and they're gonna be like, you mother, you you pendejos, 
you screwed this up, you knew the science, you knew exactly what was happening, and you did nothing. Or they're going to say this was the greatest generation in the midst of a pandemic that had killed 230,000 Americans, in the midst of a recession that had put tens of millions out of work, in the midst of the most unconstitutional, racist, horrific administration in American history, you all found the will to do the most important thing, and that is to make sure that this planet can support life going forward, to make sure that we don't cook ourselves out of a home through our emissions, our excess, and our inaction in the face of the facts. I want them to be proud of us, those people of the future. And so this, this race for railroad commissioner, it's in many ways one of the most powerful things you can do is vote for Krista Castaneda if you care about climate, our environment, and, and any chance we have for the future. Um, Michael from Germany says hello, Beto. Hey, Michael. Storm Boyd is on, our Storm very good friend. Ohio. Who always does a lot for you us here in birthday. Texas. That's right. Feliz cumpleaños, Storm. And can you tell us tomorrow what we're going to be doing as well? Is, is storm in Spanish tormenta? Una tormenta, sí. Es correcto. You want to know what we're doing tomorrow? Well, folks just want to know, like, what are you going to be doing for election day? Oh, I got you. It, I mean, this is this is the broken record. Um, we're going to be making phone calls all day, election day. So you might say, well, you know, shouldn't you? I don't know what you're going to say. But, like, you know, what else would I do? Watch cable news and... Yep bite my fingernails and grind my teeth and, you know, yeah. be stressed and anxious? Or can I, what's the word when you, like, you have an electrical charge and you, you get rid of it? Dispel? Dispel, dissipate, Discharge? dispense. Discharge? Discharge. There you go. Can I discharge? So I've got all this, like, wired energy and electricity in my system because... It's election day. It's the most important election of our lives. We live in the biggest swing state. I think this this really will hinge on Texas. There's going to be a lot of electricity building up in my system, and some of that is good, and you can put that to use. Too much of it is bad, and you need to discharge some of that, Yeah. or, or it'll fry your head, right? Right. And so the, the best way to do that is to work and to make phone calls. And if you join our phone bank... Um, I want you to join it today, but if you join it tomorrow as well, look, you're going to be calling a lot of people who are going to tell you, we try to update the, the, the list of voters that we call, so when we know someone's voted in early voting, we strike their name because they've already voted, we don't need to call them, we try not to have them on your list, the lists aren't perfect, sometimes you'll get someone who's already voted, but tomorrow when we're calling people, I mean, we may reach people who are in line voting, and then we just say, look, more power to you. Stay in that line. Yep. Thank you for voting. Tell your friends and family. While you're in that line, text everyone in your contacts and make sure that they're voting as well. Yeah. You're going to reach people who have already voted. Uh, but you're also, there There are going to be some people we reach who are going to be like, oh, thank you so much for calling. I, I knew I, I was forgetting something today and it was to vote. You, I, others who may be overly involved on Twitter and social media. I mean, this is all we're talking about and thinking about and seeing. Other people may not be all about social media, may not have the luxury of being on social media, may understandably want nothing to do with social media. I saw Stephen King. Uh -huh. You know Stephen King? Oh, my mom loves Stephen King. Such a great author. Great storyteller. And he tweeted yesterday or the day before, he said... Um, I'm off this thing until after the election meeting. Really? I'm not going to be on Twitter. And somebody responded. And they said, you know things are bad. When when Stephen King, who has come up with some of the most horrific things right. in his novels, that, that this is too much for him. Wow. <laughs> He's That's a good point. For a little bit. That's a good point. Um, so, yeah, check check out, of, follow Stephen King's lead, leave Twitter and, and get on the phones. And, and maybe even Stephen King will make phone calls with us if we can get this message out to him. Come on, Stephen. Um, but 
that's what I'm going to be doing on election day. We're, we're going to have phone banks, and we've got an amazing lineup. And I'll give, it's not a huge surprise because you can go online and find it, but I don't want to, I, I want you to focus on, on the folks that you're going to be phone banking with today. Yeah. Jack Black and Jeff Ament and Jim Ward and the Deschanel sisters and, uh, and Jason Bateman. But tomorrow, election day, the very last phone bank of all the phone banks that we've done all year. Wow. We've done like, how many do you think? A oh million my phone banks. God. We've done like 200, 300. Yeah. 100, yeah. Phone banks, right? yeah. And text banks. And thank you to all of our text bankers out there who have literally sent oh. tens of millions of texts to Texas voters to help them get registered back when we can still do that, to get in touch with them ahead of this election, to turn them out to vote now that we're down to the wire but our very last special guest is going to be Veronica Escobar who is the congresswoman for 16th congressional district which encompasses El Paso, Texas she's my congressperson she along with Sylvia Garcia became the first Latina ever elected to congress she is such a fierce champion for our community, for the U.S.-Mexico and Texas-Mexico border, and has led one phone bank after another into border communities to talk to and listen to border voters in English and in Spanish, and to encourage them to make a plan to vote, and, and now to vote on Tuesday. And she's gonna do everything she can, so El Paso, Texas, in the midst of the worst COVID outbreak in the United States of, of America, our hometown. A lot of people going through a lot. Too many have lost someone in, in their lives. Really struggling, really hard right now. She is, she has raised an army of volunteers to call voters in El Paso to make sure that in the midst of these trying times and extraordinary conditions that we reach those El Paso voters who could literally decide the outcome of this election. If El Paso turns out in at historic levels on election day, and we've already surpassed you know, our, our best performance in early voting already, in, in large part thanks to her and others and of course the El Paso voter who turned out despite these circumstances. If, if we do that again on election day, and then, and then some, I think El Paso, which is the last county to vote, so we're Mountain Standard Time in El Paso, the rest of the, the state is in Central Standard Time. It's the last county to vote, the last county to post its numbers. It could be the county that puts Joe Biden over the top on election night and ends our nightmare. You don't even have to go to any other state. You don't have to wait for all the people on cable to be prognosticating and predicting and saying if this happens, then this and this and the other. And oh no, we've got a court battle and Donald Trump is trying to claim victory even though the if Texas comes in, game over. It is done. El Paso might very well decide who wins Texas. And so, if, if you want to be there at the 11th hour, literally, the very last phone bank will be hosted by Veronica Escobar, and we will be calling in to those El Paso voters who will still have a few hours to make a decision to get in line and cast their ballot. You can sign up for that one. And all of this is at poweredbypeople.org. Poweredxpeople.org. Cool. All right, Pedro, before we sign off, just a couple more shout outs and then one fun question. Um, Michelle from Wisconsin says, hello. Go Wisco. We're, we are another big, important state that, that needs to come through for the country right now. So, Michelle, we're grateful for you. Romy from New York says, hello. Go Romy. Hope you're going to be on the phone bank today. Jeremy says, you're a good dude. <laughs> Jeremy, <laughs> right back at you. Uh, Viola says hello from Western Australia. Whoa, Viola, what? wonder what time of day it is or what day it is. Right, is that's it true. Tomorrow? Yeah. I don't know. Who knows? And the last question before we sign off, a fun question. Somebody wants to know, what do you have for breakfast, Beto? So, Cynthia, who's our 
photographer, you know, <laughs> camera operator right now, but is runs everything that we do on the road. And along with Kate and Aaron and Andy and David and Jana uh, and and the rest of the team uh, helps to organize all of us volunteers. You know, now well over ten thousand volunteers who have taken shifts to knock on doors and make phone calls. Cynthia, on top of all of that, and, and always keeps us on schedule and, and is the quartermaster and logistician, if that's a word, you know, make sure that we get it done. She also today, when she showed up at my Airbnb in Midland this morning at 7 a.m., showed up with this big molten Java <laughs> coffee and a uh, omelet burrito with beans and then a bean and cheese burrito. And so I drank that coffee, I ate those burritos, I've got that in my system now, full of beans, and uh, and I'm ready to take on the day. So Cynthia, thank you for, for oh, yeah, today. Totally. That, was, that was a good one. And now folks, um, our, our parting shot, we're, we're, we're in what they call West Texas, still 130 miles to go to, to get to El Paso, but this is what it looks like. It's starting to look like home. And I can I can almost see the finish line of this road. We've been on the road for about 4,000 miles over this last week, visiting all those communities that we talked about earlier, meeting with our volunteers, knocking on doors. I can see the end of this road, the end of I-10 in Texas that takes me to El Paso. And I can also see the end of the road of 2020. Like I can see 7.01 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, Tuesday, tomorrow. I can see it from here. And we want to make sure that, that seeing that finish line out there, that we sprint all the way through. We, we don't slow down. We don't let ourselves worry. We certainly don't take anything for granted. We just do the work and get it done. So we hope we see you on the phone banks today. Looking forward to making calls with you and really looking forward to being back home in El Paso, Texas. Adios.